There you go. All right, guys, today we have a special guest, Tim Carpenter, my MMA BJJ coach, owner of a couple studios. So he's walking in and we're going to put him through a workout. It's going to be sick. The man, the myth, the legend is here. What's up, brother? What's up? All right, guys, we have Tim Carpenter here. Tim, introduce yourself. As you heard, my name is Tim Carpenter. Um, I'm the owner of Hellfish Mixed Martial Arts. Two locations, one in Chalfont, one in Bridgeport, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm also Joe's Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai coach. You have a tournament coming up, don't you? Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna run him through a uh, workout. So I, I always like wanted to work with a fighter or someone who has fought before and kind of just see what I can do programming wise. Uh, we're gonna kind of shoot the stuff with his background, training history, what it takes to be a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, professional fighter, all that kind of stuff. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And he also likes strongman training, so I hear. So we may Always do, wanted to try it. Yeah, do a little bit of strongman, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's go. What's your training history been like? like have you done CrossFit? Did you ever do like bodybuilding? general training conditioning like what's what's it like to be a professional fighter in training um, conditioning I've always been into like uh, strength stuff so I've done a little bit of everything I've done uh -huh. a little bit of Olympic lifting CrossFit bodybuilding stuff that's probably how I started was just like yeah. bicep curls yeah, yeah, yeah. and bench press you know um, but I've done I tried doing like powerlifting for a little while mm -hmm. so I've done a little bit of everything I've never actually trained like with strongman equipment okay bags and boulders and stuff yeah, like yeah, yeah. That, but, uh, what do you think it has worked the best in terms of like transferring over to fighting? Um, definitely sort of like the uh, circuit training stuff, okay. like high intensity stuff has a definite benefit I've seen. Um, also sort of steady state, long cardio. Yep. I do that a couple times a week. Um, and when I was fighting professionally, I had a strength conditioning coach and the system we basically use was like um, upper body strength and lower body plyometrics on one day mm -hmm. and then reverse it the other day. So like lower body strength, upper body plyometrics gotcha. on another day. And then uh, two or one or two days of circuit training. Uh, so. Now, if you were just to do, you would think like jujitsu versus both, like for MMA, mm -hmm. would you train differently if you were a jujitsu guy versus a fighter? Probably, yeah. Okay. Uh, jujitsu is a little bit more almost like a lot of isometric yeah. contractions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of holding something for like five, ten seconds, not so much big explosive movements. Yeah. Uh, depending on, on the individual, kind of, some people are very explosive, but even. In just grappling, it's a little bit more uh, longer term sort of muscular endurance and explosiveness. Yeah, so with the MMA athlete, you'd probably be a little bit more well-rounded. Yeah, you want a little bit more, yeah. uh, probably more explosive speed work okay. um, as opposed to just pure jiu-jitsu. Nice, all right. So we're gonna get into what I have planned for him on the board and then uh, we're gonna warm up. And after the warm up, we're just gonna get right on into it. I'm gonna ask him some questions throughout the training. Hopefully you guys are gonna learn some things, uh, get into the inside the mind of a you know professional fighter and then you're gonna see, you know, just what we do. So I'm really pumped about this. So let's go over to the board. All right, guys. So to start off uh, for strength, we're just gonna do basic trap bar deadlifts. Uh, I like that because I think it's a little bit more athletic than a tr typical conventional deadlift, especially if someone's getting more specific uh, and closer maybe to a fight or a competition. We're gonna keep it basic five by five at the top of the fifth set. We should be able to do about two or three more reps. So RP8 is kind of what we're looking for. Uh, I haven't trained with Tim before in the gym, so it's gonna be just an easy way to gauge it instead of using a percentage. Uh, between, I want him doing three burby broad jumps just to keep him loose and athletic. Uh, we're training kind of that um, MMA fighter right now. So it's like we, he was just saying previously, it's not gonna be just uh, BJJ, we're gonna do both. So being athletic and explosive is just gonna be a pro uh, for that athlete. Uh, then we're gonna go over to accessory work. So we're gonna do three to four rounds of a Viking press. So throwing in a little bit of strongman in there. We're gonna do a arm over arm sled pull. And then he's actually gonna pull the sled back. So we're working the pull as well as the legs. Uh, then we're gonna do a bridge chest press for 10 reps. And then we're gonna do some rotational ball throws, which is just kind of typical for any fighter. Just we wanna get in that rotational plane, especially for people who are throwing punches, kicks. That's very important to make sure that we can use those muscles uh, and rotate really strong. Uh, the conditioning, I gave actually Tim the option 
uh, whether he wanted to do a sled push uh, with some shadow boxing. Uh, and then he actually went with the straw man one. So the straw man one is an every minute on the minute uh, for nine minutes. We're gonna do a bag over shoulder. We're gonna do some farmer walks for 100 feet. And then we're gonna do battle ropes. So we'll rotate through each one of those. Uh, but that's kind of what we have on tap. So we kind of went through it mentally, visualized the training session, and now we're just gonna go and attack it. straight up, right back down, back up, just like so. Kind of neutral gaze. Um, the biggest thing that I think people do wrong with these is they always do touch and go from the ground. So try to reset between every rep, flex your triceps so that um, we're not ever jerking the bar off the ground, okay? Um, but that reset is gonna help you just get way better at it versus every time the bar hits the ground you're vibrating, you're throwing something off little by little. Um, so we're just gonna practice doing the reset every time, but warm up, set it like five or 10 and then we'll start taking some jumps and then we'll start doing the burpee broad jumps between our sets and we'll rest completely in between. All right, so 65 pound bar, uh, 45s on each side, um, but it, it's, you should be able to lift more of the trap bar than a typical deadlift. This is close to my max. Oh man. <laughs> Everybody, this is Tim's PR right here. Cue epic music. <laughs> How many? Just do uh, like five to 10. If you're good at five, then we'll just start working up. We need a little bit more, take your time. All right, Tim, so what's one of the biggest things you've learned from fighting in your career? Um, probably the biggest thing I've learned is like uh, the importance of your mind when you're competing or fighting or doing anything. Um, I, I remember like the exact moment when it hit me I was like 18 in a, in a tournament against a guy that had beat me like five or six times before that. Like every time I went up against him, he just smashed me. And uh, I remember clearly in my head before, I, before our match, saying like, fuck this guy, I'm not gonna let him, yeah. I'm not gonna let him push me around. You know, and with that change in my mindset, I went out there, I fought differently. And after the first, like he didn't beat me in the first 30 seconds, which was usually happen. And then I felt like I was in the game, you know? Mm -hmm. And then eventually I beat him, I beat him twice that day. And that was the last time we ever competed against each other. So I feel like that was really when I, it clicked in my mind how important it is to change your mindset before you compete and not just go out there and see what happens. And uh, I was able to apply that in all my professional fights as well. This, this was like an amateur thing when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I took that into all my other fights because going into a fight is terrifying, it can be, you know, but you have to just get your mind set that, you know, this guy is just a person just like you, um, and you've done all the hard work that you need to do to, to win. So yeah, that's the, uh, the mindset I think is the most important thing. Think of the, what we just did? It was great. It was a uh, full body. Um, a lot of stuff I haven't done before, like the uh, the bridging chest press. Looks like it's very applicable to like grappling jujitsu. Mm -hmm. um, Viking press is cool, even though it jacked my elbow up a little bit. But that's my fault, not the exercise's fault. Damn bar. <laughs> um, trap bar deadlift I've done before. Um, I hate doing them, but I'm glad you made <laughs> me do them. Um, but yeah, it was great.
Cool, man. So Tim decided to do the every minute on the minute conditioning routine that we're gonna do. So we're just gonna run it through nine minutes, which means he'll do each one three times. A little bit of strongman theme here as well. Uh, so the first one we're gonna do is a bag over shoulder. So we're just pick the bag up using that hip and uh, triple extension, right over, turn around, pick it up, throw it over. Probably do like one to three reps. We wanna keep it short and intense. I don't want him going past 10 seconds of work, okay? So as explosive as possible, probably applicable to like takedowns, okay? We're trying to just be explosive, um, you know, move into a, like a pass or something like that. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, from there, we're gonna do farmer walks. So we have two farmer handles set up, another strongman movement. So we're just gonna pick them up and we're going down 50 feet back, 50 feet. So however long he has left is his rest time. Last one we're gonna do is down here. We're gonna hit up some traditional battle ropes. I think these originated with fighters probably. Uh, but I'm gonna have him do any variation that he wants. He can do just quick waves. We can go just jacks, whatever. He can slam, we can go rainbows. It doesn't matter uh, as long as he's moving. And that one's just gonna be for duration. So I'm going 20 seconds all out on the ropes. Give him 40 seconds of rest. So we'll go through that nine minutes, three times each movement, and then he's gonna be done with the conditioning. How you feeling? Uh, feel good. Like a good push, kind of like right yeah. where you want to be. Yeah. Uh, I love that kind of training. That sort of like high intensity. Yeah. That's what it feels like to be in a fight. It's like the kind of thing where you're like your your mind shuts off. You just kind of go, 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 and then it's over, and you can't breathe. You feel like you're dead. Yeah. But um, it's a great feeling. What was your favorite out of the three we just did? Um, I really like. I've never done the uh, sandbag before, so that yeah. was cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, just two reps is pretty taxing. Yeah. So it's, I like that. And I've always liked farmer's walks. Yeah. So, um, and ropes. I've done that for right. years. Yeah. <laughs> too <laughs> a lot of that, too so. many times. Yeah, but like farmer's walks and the, uh, the bag was really cool. Sweet. All right, so a question I have for you is, is jujitsu or MMA for everybody? Yes and no. All right. Um, so everybody, I think, should try it. Not, if you have 10 people that try it, you might have five people that stick with it for two years, and then you might have two or three that stick with it for 10 years, mm -hmm. and then, you know, if you, I mean, I think if you stick with it for five, 10 years, you're probably gonna be in it for a long time. Um, and then it's also a matter of, uh, everybody can benefit from training uh, martial arts, same, same as here. Like, everybody can benefit from coming in and getting stronger, mm -hmm. but not everybody's gonna necessarily benefit from competing in a strongman competition. Yeah. Same thing with jiu-jitsu. Like, not everybody's gonna benefit from becoming a, or not everybody should become a professional fighter mm -hmm. or even an amateur fighter. Um, I think for jiu-jitsu, um, everybody should compete at least once to get a taste of it, just to see what it's like to experience that. Um, but it's a much lower barrier of entry than uh, fighting is. Fighting takes years and years of, and more skills to develop before you can actually step in a cage and fight somebody. Mm -hmm. Whereas jiu-jitsu, you can, you know, you got your first tournament coming up and you've yeah. been training in less than a year, mm -hmm. you know? So um, anybody can, can compete in a jiu-jitsu tournament. But I would say it's for everybody, but not everybody's gonna stick with it. Do you, you know? think you get a lot of people that come in thinking they're going to be fighters and then real, like either real quick they're just realizing it's not for them or they just do it because they think it sounds cool or? A lot of people are like that. Like they, people want to, um, not many people want to be in a fight. People mm -hmm. want to like, they see somebody knock somebody out on the UFC and they want to, they want to be the guy that knocks the guy out. They don't want to be the person that gets knocked out. But there's a good chance that you could be the one getting knocked out. Um, so there's a lot of people that think they can do it until they actually train and even sometimes when people train for like a year they think that they're, they're delusional in the sense that they can mm -hmm. you know they're training twice a week but they think they could fight in the ufc yeah um whereas like to fight at a high level you need to be training six seven days a week that's like what you're living and breathing um so i don't get too much of that anymore i've had it in the past but mm -hmm. not too much anymore being a fighter and now kind of be on the outside of it where you're coaching people now like is there a misconception you think with fighting or fighters in general yeah i think um 
a lot of times you probably experience it too like people see a big guy with tattoos they think he's just like some maniac just got out of jail or something um but when you most fighters that i've encountered are almost all cool mm -hmm. like down to earth people um very giving um they're not there are crazy like anything else there's maniacs yeah. involved in everything but um for the most part people in fighting are uh much more sort of grounded because of what you experience day in and day out like you can't get good without getting beat up mm -hmm. and there's a humility that comes along with getting beat up a lot when you first start that you you understand what's possible to happen to you and you understand sort of the power you have over people when you're in a position of advantage so um, you're able to uh sort of like regulate yourself a little bit better i think mm -hmm. than someone that doesn't experience that kind of thing. Guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm actually gonna go head over to his place in a couple days and we're gonna film like a part two to this whole thing and some videos for his channel as well. Uh, so definitely make sure that you go over and check out his channel and all his social media. But I'm gonna let him plug himself on where you can find him, how you can get in contact with him. And uh, yeah, so where can we find him? Um, Hellfish Mixed Martial Arts on YouTube. Hellfish MMA on Instagram. Also Hellfish BJJ on Instagram. Um, and my two gyms, one in Chalfont, uh, HellfishMMA.com, and the other one's in Bridgeport, PA. All right, guys. So go over, subscribe to his channel, follow him on social. He is literally like one of the coolest dudes, best coaches I've ever trained with. I'm really critical of people as coaches, and he's just an, an awesome coach. He can help anybody at any level. Uh, but we're trying to grow his YouTube channel, okay? So make sure you go subscribe. He's got tons of videos that need to be watched uh, to make you become way better at the sport of mixed martial arts or jujitsu tons and tons of experience so subscribe or leave my channel and don't ever come back i don't like you goodbye